The slowdown in the economy has hit the infrastructure space hard, leaving infra financing companies staring at low growth. Sajid Mangat caught up with Hemant Kanoria, chairman of Shea Group, on the sidelines of the India Economic Forum in New Delhi and began by asking him about his outlook on the infra financing space and the challenges ahead for the sector. The infrastructure is going through quite tough times because there has been a lot of issues which has arisen in the infrastructure sector because many of the cases the government uh, government bodies state governments if they were power plant the ppas have been cancelled fsa has been cancelled if it was toll road toll projects it was going on all right but there are a lot of uh, awards which has been given through the arbitrations there are disputes which are not getting resolved because of that what happens is that the payments do not come mm. to the construction companies to the concessioners on time they are not in a position to pay back to the bank bankers on time. If they don't pay to the bankers on time, it creates a vicious cycle because the bankers will put them under as an NPL, then they will not be in a position to borrow further. So therefore, the whole account gets into a mess. Mm. And that is exactly what has happened. So I think that it is very important to reverse that cycle. And as the finance minister has already, appoint, uh, has already announced a couple of weeks back, that she is uh, planning to see that how the government payments which are stuck up are released by the various governments. So I think that one is the government payments which are stuck up. Second is because about a couple of years back, the government had also proposed an infrastructure dispute resolution tribunal to be mm -hmm. set up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that that has to be also expedited because if an infrastructure dispute resolution tribunal is in place, then the then all the infrastructure players, whether it be contractors, concessioners, the problems which they keep on facing because they are going from one court to the other mm -hmm. and for years together. Mm -hmm. And the project gets stuck up. And if the project gets stuck up, then it has a huge interest burden mm -hmm. and pre-operative cost. So if you look at it, most of the infra projects which are getting completed now in India, almost about 15 to 25 percent, even going up to 35 percent, is a cost of interest. So therefore, no project can become viable. How is your cost of borrowing looking then in that sense? So borrowing basically for us also because we are relying more on after the episode of ILFS and many other NBFCs, we are also relying more on the financing from banks and mm. through NCDs, etc. Definitely mm. the cost has gone up by about 100-150 basis points mm. for all of us. Fortunately for us, because we do not have an asset liability maturity ma mismatch, we have fully liquid whatever is required to service our debt mm -hmm. plus over and over and above that whatever business we are doing we are doing business also mm -hmm. on uh, on a monthly basis so we are in a position to raise the resources and for us if our cost goes up we have a pass through mechanism to the borrower for us so therefore for the borrower the cost goes up in the interest you know, space because last two three quarters we've seen your asset under management coming down right uh, at least last uh, q4 uh, q3 q4 and then Q1 of this financial year. Um, and that is uh, a concern which is coming in because, uh, you know, that uh, that's also because of uh, the you're very close to the regulatory cap of 15%. Uh, have you addressed, been, have you been able to address that uh, with capital coming in? Yeah, so we have been able to address the capital infusion. We have also been able to, as you very rightly mentioned, that the business also, the disbursements, what we were doing last year has reduced because of two reasons. One, the sales of construction mining equipments, which we have been financing, has also fallen down. The last one year, the market has, there has been a degrowth of almost about 30%. In the sale of construction and mining equipment, is it? Yeah, and, and uh, you, so you're, so you're not taking seeing uh, construction and mining equipment uh, picking up in last no, one. No, the no. last one year there has been a degrowth of almost about thirty percent. So therefore, the market has fallen down. So definitely, our disbursements will also slow down, in mm. sync with the market, mm. because if the demand is not there. And because if you look at it, elections came in. So before the elections, there was the election code. After the elections, the government is just setting up the budgets and also still the pickup in the infra sector where the investments by the government has to happen has not started picking up as yet. So because when we had the parliament elections and all the states, they have the election code. So they don't award the new contracts. So I think that this pickup, once it happens, then again, we'll see a pickup in our disbursements. Mm -hmm. And as we had already mentioned about five years back that our infrastructure portfolio, infrastructure financing portfolio, we were successively every year reducing it. So that is in sync again with our strategy. So therefore the book size, if you have seen that there has
has been a lower book size compared to what it was last year. It is only because the new disbursements has not taken place. It is not the old disbursements. So, are you diversifying to other sectors? If you are reducing infra, uh, so we are in infra. We are in basically financing healthcare, IT. So there has been a slowdown in almost everything. So therefore, the pickup of equipments, and we are an equipment financing company. So as an equipment financing company, the sales happen. Then only we have a financing business. So what we have done is that we have looked at reducing our cost. We have improved the collection efficiencies. So by doing all these, we will improve our profitability. So by March 2020. we are hopeful that we will be in good profits as we were last year so i don't see that there will be a dent in the profit because mm. but but what about uh, profile of credit profile of your top 20 borrowers because that's a concern which many of the analysts have so basically you see 20 borrowers are not very pertinent to us because we have close to about 100000 customers mm. so they but they account for a chunk of your yeah but what happens that in our case if there is a large customer also our equipments are small So therefore, let us suppose a customer has hundred thousand. We have given him hundred crore of rupees. On hundred crore of rupees, there will be about close to hundred equipments. So actually, it is not bulky financing. It is small financing because if his equip, if anything goes wrong with the com- company, we are in a position to repossess the equipments, resell the equipments, and that is a skill set which the company has set up in the last thirty years. so therefore for us a large customer is only large if you have given one equipment of 200 300 crore and that we have not so top 20 account for how what percentage of your total so the top 20 will be hardly about uh, 15% 15% and you're saying are you seeing improvement in those 20 or is it uh, status quo or? no there is gradual equi- uh, improvement and also because of the fact that you you know people were holding on to the equipment they were not reselling it so because of the new contracts don't come then we have to basically influence and persuade the customers to sell those equipment so the realization takes place and when the sale of the equipment takes place it is not that those equipments are that we earn a loss because we would have realized some money would have got a security deposit so basically the loss that we take on the final sale of the equipment is not large